Welcome to the Woman Angler and Adventurer Podcast, inspiring real women with a passion for fishing and the outdoors to go get their adventure on. Now, here's your fearless host, Angie Scott. Welcome, everyone, to this week's episode of the Woman Angler and Adventurer Podcast. I have a special guest with me this week, TJ Gramberg. TJ, welcome to the show. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Are you are you in Wisconsin? Yep, northern, okay. northern. Yep. Great. And you're originally from Minnesota, though, right? Yes. <laughs> Transplant. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Go Minnesota. But are you a Vikings fan or a Packers fan? No. Neither. <laughs> I'm a fishing fan. Yeah, you're too busy fishing <laughs> to be able to worry about football on Sundays. <laughs> All right. Well, good deal. Well, uh, if you wouldn't mind, give give listeners who aren't familiar with you just a little backstory on your um, history on getting into the sport of fishing and the outdoors. Sure. So I did not fish. Uh, it just wasn't part of my upbringing. Um, when I met my husband, he actually took me out ice fishing on a date. And um That was, I think, my third experience fishing ever. Um, And it was fun, but I I was really leery of the ice and the cracking and the all that stuff. So, Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's really been instrumental in this whole thing for me because he's encouraged from the very beginning um, everything. my interest in learning as much as I can. Um, he often says that I, I fish a lot different than he does. I fish in different ways because I've not learned like old school ways like mm-hmm. he has. He's been fishing his whole life. So um, for me, it's, it's a lot of like learning from the internet, learning from YouTube videos, learning from friends like the Wisconsin Women Fish Group. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just can't get enough. <laughs> so how so, how long ago was that that you got introduced to it? Uh, about six years okay. ago. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Well, you've really come a long way in, in six <laughs> years. <laughs> That's awesome. So uh, and I first met you at a Wisconsin Women Fish event. I remember you were doing a little um, seminar on different bass lures and like showing how yeah. to how to use them and stuff. And uh, so so talk about your journey in the short amount of time, kind of going from somebody who never really grew up fishing, which is a little bit unusual for somebody that grew up in Minnesota and Wisconsin. <laughs> like you know, <laughs> yeah. At, at least in my experience, most people have families you know that are really into it up there because there's you know not a whole lot else to do especially in the winter time when it gets really cold you got to find those activities to to keep you busy so um but but kind of talk about your journey in this six short years of going from someone who really didn't have much experience to just getting introduced to it and becoming this person who just is wanting to soak up all the information that you can get your hands on and to now where you've actually got sponsors, which is, that's just incredible. Yeah. Um, I guess, you know, like starting out with my husband and stuff um, and getting my, my kids into the schools out here. Um, my daughter had Ricky Pardon as an ice fishing coach. And that is how I got with the Wisconsin Women Fish Group. Um, Mm -hmm. Ricky was really encouraging, um, knowing that I didn't have a lot of experience, but we used to go and help out with the kids tournaments and stuff like that. So, you know, joining the group was a big step in um, continuing uh, with the fishing, but not necessarily with my husband. So that was a big step for me. I'm a very nervous person, like, especially around new people. And um, so 
I went to one of the events and I think it was the crappie fishing at Deerfoot okay. um, over in Hayward. And I met a lot of women there that just, they just wanted to help and they wanted to show you what they were doing and they were so easy to talk to. And I think being part of a group um, made it a lot easier for me to kind of branch out and want to do more and want to keep learning and mm. fish different ways, fish different fish. Um, so that being said, like that kind of brought me to, um, you know, like one thing that I, I really liked was bass fishing, largemouth. And um, when I would go to these events and I, I would have women asking me questions and I may, I by no means like have all the answers or whatever, but um, they would ask me what I knew and how I fished for them and how I was successful. And that kind of led to Barb asking me to teach the bass class. Mm -hmm um at fish camp so um and that happened year after year I just I really enjoyed teaching all those women and and learning new things and then showing them that the next year and um one day uh, DSG had uh posted a thing on Facebook about looking for like field staff and I said hey I'll apply for it. And at that point, I didn't have uh, like a fishing bio. I didn't have a fishing resume. I didn't have anything. Um, so I had to learn that. Um, I had to learn a lot about the whole social media side mm -hmm. of, of having sponsors. And um, that was a really good experience for me to get my feet wet. Yeah, absolutely. I remember when you made that announcement, uh, getting on board with DSG, and yeah. that was that was such a huge time. I was like, "Way to go, TJ! That is so awesome." Um, yeah. Talk a little bit. I want to get into DSG a little bit, but let's go back and talk a little bit about Wisconsin Women Fish. Um, they have a program that I think is, and I think Women Anglers in Minnesota has the same type of thing, but they have a Master Angler program. And yeah. I think that that's a great way to encourage women to kind of branch out and target different species. Talk a little bit about what that program is all about. So there's all different species of fish, um, anywhere from, you know, perch to uh, sturgeon um, and all different sizes. Um, it, it really is such a good thing because like specifically for me, it helps me set personal goals. Mm -hmm. And so like there's a species that I just don't know much about. I don't know how to fish them. Um, it like I can set a goal for myself to say this year, I want to catch a master angler walleye. Um, and it kind of sets everything in motion for opening those doors to learn more. Um, so with the program, like you, you catch a fish, you measure it, you take a hero picture, you submit it. And at the end of the year or at fish camp, they do a ceremony where you're awarded a, a master angler pin for every species that you've caught in that is within the uh, measurements. And it's just such a great, it's such a great program to get, get people really interested and uh, like competitive, you yeah. know? Yeah. And motivating too, um, gives you an excuse or a reason to get out there and instead of just sitting at home, you know, you're like, I got to go get this master angler. I got to work on this. What's, right? what's like the echelon? Isn't there like a grand like if, if you catch like all the species or what is it that's like the top award? Yep, you'll get angler of the year and that's for the person that's caught the most species. Gotcha. So I think this past year there was a tie mm. um, with, I want to say it was six species. Okay. 
Um, and so with that, uh, St. Croix Rods sponsors that. So when you win that award, you get a plaque, you get a St. Croix rod. Um, mm. And it's just a really big accomplishment. Very cool. Very cool. Um, so let's talk about, you mentioned DSG, and I do want to, I want to mention them because I remember when they first came on the scene and it was like finally a company putting out gear for women. I mean, you know, things are starting to change. The tide's starting to change. We still have a long ways to go, but I think DSG coming out and making a big splash like they have and getting their products into fleet farms and other major mm -hmm retailers is such a big deal um talk about that company a little bit and why it's important for you to be affiliated with them it's a great company it's products made by women for women and there aren't that many companies like that out there mm -hmm. um so that's huge um i think they're they're definitely setting a trend for these other companies um especially with the clothing uh being more woman friendly mm -hmm. um the shape the shape of the clothing and how it can be used like i have the uh i believe it's the arctic suit and anyway they have like the drop bib mm -hmm. right so mm -hmm. going to the bathroom huge <laughs> yeah it's game, yeah. game changer. You don't have to get completely undressed just to go to the bathroom. Yep. <laughs> yep. Very nice. Any other uh, favorite pieces from DSG that you have? Oh gosh, I'm I'm in love with hats. <laughs> so <laughs> I have a lot of hats. Uh, their mittens are awesome. Um, they just have such great products. I have shirts. I have hunting pants. I've got everything from them and it just all it it fits great and it it works it's not pretty for her and right it, you know what i mean yeah functional. it definitely works so yeah yeah great well i'll put a link to their website in the show notes for this episode so people can go check out their stuff if you're not already familiar with dsg and uh, another cool thing I wanted to mention is you're also now on the field staff for another company called HT Enterprises, and you're yeah. the first female to ever be added to their field staff. So way to go, blazing the trail. Um, talk a little bit about H HT Enterprises and um, how you got on board with them. Sure. HT is a company that has all kinds of fishing equipment um everything from lures to rods to like i have this really cool thing right here it's called the siberian ice box okay and it is it is for bait it is for storage it is for rod holders it is it is so awesome i love this box um they have so many great products and they're products that help you be successful. You know, mm -hmm. that's like the biggest thing. I was having a talk with one of the guys um, with the company and, you know, I said like one of the biggest things for me is you don't make the junky pink poles for girls that break the first time you use them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, yeah. So they have a lot of products that are just versatile and, uh, coming on with them, I have a friend who is already on their staff. Um, they were having a conversation about getting women to join them, to, to show everybody that it's not just products for men. And, mm -hmm. you know, he, he had asked me if I would consider joining, um, was impressed with, uh, I don't know how you say it. Like he was impressed with, um, based on my success and my passion for the sport. Mm -hmm. Um, and thought for sure as a female angler that I have a good presence and, and I could help them further, further this. Yeah. Get, get more word out. To, to other women about their products 
that's that's awesome. Yeah. I'm proud of you for being the first one on on their field staff. Um, so Thank you. You kind of touched on this a little bit in your story with with both DSG and HD Enterprises, but um, if you could give just a, a couple tips, maybe for other women out there, kind of in your in your same position where they're super passionate about the sport, they have these products that they love to use and would love to start promoting them. Like, any tips on how you could kind of take that relationship to the next level, like you have? I think the first thing is no matter what you're using before you're even applying for these positions is start tagging these companies on social media, show them that you're using their stuff before you're even applying Um, and showing the things that you believe in, not just product pushing. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's huge. Um, you know, having a good social media following, not posting inappropriate stuff, you know, <laughs> that kind of stuff. You want to have, um, you want to put together a fishing bio, you mm-hmm. know, you want to put together a fishing resume, like what you've accomplished, um, what kinds of things you're part of. Um, and the more you can put together, the more it just shows them when when you send them that. Um, that you have the qualities that they're looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would definitely agree with everything you said there. And maybe for me too, I could throw in like building those personal relationships with the people uh, that work at these Mm -hmm. companies and, you know, go to some of the trade shows and things like that, like the, the St. Paul ice show or other, other shows like that. And I would say when you introduce yourself to them for the first time, don't immediately start with, Hey, I want to be on your, your field staff. Right. (laughs) Like build, build the relationship first, show them, you know, by tagging and doing other things on your, on your social media, what products you're using, why you love them. And, and then over time, I think it's just a, it becomes a natural progression and they want to add you because they see your passion and your commitment to their products, you know, so sure. you, yep. you're de- definitely going about it the right way, it sounds like, which is great. And uh, another company I know that you work with is and, and uh, is near and dear to my heart as well, so I definitely want to talk about them, is Al's Goldfish Lure Company. Uh, how yes. did you first discover Al's? Actually, uh, they had put their feelers out in the Wisconsin Women Fish Group looking for female anglers who fished for Northern Pike. And Ah. I jumped. (laughs) (laughs) So um, that was uh, how I first got into contact with them. And it's been awesome ever since. Yeah, Jeff and Mandy, for those of you that don't know, Els is run by... Jeff and Mandy Dubwin. Mandy is a female co-owner, so that's awesome. You know, their president is female. Um, Al's has been around for a really long time. In fact, going in this year when this episode will be airing is the first week of January 2022 is their 70th year in, uh, in the fishing industry. And so seven decades of a lure, that, that says something right there. Yeah. Yeah, like these lures, they're more than just lures, though. It's Mm -hmm. like this company is about the successes you have with their lures, you know? Yeah. And it's, they're a USA-based company, which Mm -hmm. is huge. Absolutely. And so they've accomplished so much. 70 years is incredible. Yeah, and, and now with Jeff and Mandy on board and continuing to grow and branching out into different, you know, types of lures and stuff i know you've used them for all sorts of different fishing not just for pike i mean they they catch about any kind of fish and and ice fishing even what what kind of success have you had with uh their lures ice fishing oh gosh we've gotten everything from perch to um northern largemouth uh crappie 
gosh, last, no, not last year, the year before that, we actually got uh, a muskie, a tiger muskie through the oh, ice. Wow. Oh, wow. On, on one of the owls. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So I sent the picture to Mandy and she's like, oh, cool. What's that? And I'm like, that's not, oh, cool. That's a tiger <laughs> muskie. <laughs> That's awesome. I told the story recently about, I guess I, I had um, uh, uh, Kenny on the show recently. He's got the Kenny's Christmas kit out with owls and, and different kits. But um, I was telling him the story about we were in La, La Crosse, Wisconsin with Mandy fishing on the uh, Angler Quest on the, the uh, I think it's the Black River. Is that what that's called there that branches off the Mississippi in La Crosse uh... or Pearl or I think it's the Black river i want to say anyway we were we were out there and we're fishing you know throwing kind of bank beating the bank with whatever we were using and mandy's like just kind of throwing out in the middle of nowhere and i'm like bless her heart she's probably not going to catch anything and <laughs> darn if she doesn't hook into a nice walleye with her owl's goldfish <laughs> none of us yeah. catching anything <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah so very cool yeah um what what I'm is gonna it? show you this? Oh yeah, let's see what you got there. This is my small collection of owls. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's awesome. I'm telling you, they work any way you use them. Yeah, uh, you know, dead sticking everything. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. What do you think? Um, ice fishing. What do you think makes them so um, successful? Is it the flash? I think it's just Everything. The action, the mm -hmm. flash, yep. Very yep, cool. they just have a great look to them, and like the flutter that you get when they're dropping mm -hmm. is huge. Yeah, I love the the action that Els has. If you guys haven't checked it out, definitely, uh, you know, go go to Bass Pro. They're at, all over the place at Bass Pro now. Um, uh, you know, go to their, their website. website. Yep. They have. Yeah. Check them out. It's worth. Yeah, they uh, have some really cool things. I got this yeah. scarf from them. I love it. It's my favorite. <laughs> so soft. Yeah, it is. They, I know. Yep, they've got different apparel and um and other other accessories too. I love their little uh the the protectors for your treble hooks. I oh, can't the hook think bonnets. Of, yeah, the hook bonnets. Those are so nice yep. to have because I'm always getting mm -hmm. my treble hooks hooked on whatever you could possibly think of. <laughs> so yep. the, those have been a huge game changer for me, especially when I travel and stuff. So, um, yeah. and for storage and they don't get all tangled up in each other. Um, so yeah, owlsgoldfish.com, go check it out. Go check out their variety of products, get you some. I recommend, do you have a couple favorites that you recommend? Like I, I love the original goldfish. Uh, in silver and in gold. I don't think you can beat either one of those. Um, do you have any um, favorites? I like the original. Um, I really like the 49ers, mm -hmm. especially for ice fishing. Um, yeah. I use the big one ice fishing and not just the little ice fishing 49er. Okay. Um, but um, I think those and the Northern Edition are my favorite ones. Yeah. And I love the, <clears throat> we got to go up to Cape Cod on a little trip with uh, some of the Wisconsin women fish ladies. And uh, one of the guys, Todd Correer, who's a, a writer up there, he got to design his own owl's goldfish lure. And we were using that to catch um, striper from the beach or, or the, oh, wow. I guess the coast or whatever. And uh, that thing works. <laughs> yeah. It was so much fun. And I mean, you could cast it forever. It's got some good weight to it, you know, and yeah, uh, we caught quite a few. So, so yeah, again, definitely go check them out. They're good for all. I don't know of a more versatile lure, honestly, off the top of my head that you can fish saltwater, freshwater and catch all the, all the different species. So, yeah. I'm not big into trout fishing. I don't know about you, but I know that they're really good trout lures as well. 
no, I'm not a trout. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but everything else. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Down here in Florida, I've been catching a lot of speckled trout. I haven't thrown an owls yet. I probably should try it. Um, it's pretty shallow and rocky, so I'm a little bit afraid of getting it hung up. Um, cause even my swim bait, I get that hung up sometimes so I can usually get it off. So, but I may have to give it a try. I think if you use see. a lighter one, mm -hmm. use a lighter one. Yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. I'll have to, I'll definitely have to give that a shot. Um, so what else do you have going on? I know, um, you, you've got some big plans coming up this season. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Yeah, well, this winter, we're planning on ice camping for the first time. Super excited about that. Um, there are some of these lakes out here that uh, I just don't want to leave. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to we're gonna just stay. Yeah. And so super excited about that. As far as um, spring and summer, oh, gosh. Uh, so I started Bent Rod Adventures last year, which is a guiding uh, company um, and we guide out on the clam and siren for big channel catfish mm. and cool. so originally I started it because I wanted the women in the Wisconsin women fish group to come out and and learn how to fish these catfish and not only that, but to get their master anglers. Like yeah. I was so excited to see people come out, get their master anglers and go home and be so proud. And these fish can fight. And oh, it's, yeah. it's been so awesome seeing that. So um, last year we had 30 women with 65 master angler catfish. Wow. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of catfish, <laughs> big catfish. It's a lot of yeah, it's a lot of catfish. And, you know, my husband and I, um, we did a lot of learning out there and trying to get our friends on to fish. And so we were so successful, way more successful than I thought we would be. And so this year we actually have 57 women signed up already. Wow. Um, and then we have some other trips with their husbands and the kids and stuff like that. So we do have more trips planned, but as far as the women go, um, I definitely have a greater amount this year and I'm so excited to see what we catch. Very cool. I'm excited too. Um, do you have like a, a website for that or just socials right now? Yeah, right now it's just on Facebook. Um, okay. I wanted to keep it more friend based in the mm -hmm. beginning because we have some plans a direction for it to go in but we're just not quite there yet so um for now you know it's kind of word of mouth and friends and family and stuff like that so um if you do have an interest you can check out some of the fish that we've caught look on facebook um and you can even send me a message you know on there so if you're interested in it Great. I'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. And uh, and just the thought I had, you know, when you, we first started this conversation, you talked about the first time you went fishing and ice and it was ice fishing and you were kind of nervous about the cracking and, and whatnot. And now here you yeah. are, you're going to be camping on the ice. So clearly you've gotten over that fear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, definitely. Yeah. So anybody who's in in that position look at tj look at her progression she's made in six years and um you can get started at any time and you know there's so many resources out there to help you and help you learn great people like tj and other members of groups like wisconsin women fish or women anglers of minnesota or maybe you have a group local to where you are that you know you can connect with and uh step out of your comfort zone, give it a try, meet people. And, you know, you, you could have, you could have not gone to that first meeting, you know, and, and where do you think oh, you'd I, be? Yeah. You know, I sat outside for a while <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> but yeah, but I did it. I went, yep. yeah, I, I, you're never too old. I feel like, you know, um, Absolutely. coming from the background that I had, 
you're never too old. And if you have a passion for it, it is just, it's just there. So go with it. All right. Well, what an inspiration. Uh, Appreciate you being on the show. That's what this show is all about is to share stories of amazing women like you who, you know, put themselves out there and uh, love to, to watch the journey and I can't wait to see all pictures of all these catfish coming up this year yes. and uh, all the women that you're going to have uh, be able to share that experience with. So, yeah. Thank you. Very cool. Thanks again for taking some time out to be on the show. And uh, we'll definitely stay in touch and continue to follow you. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Thank you for having me.